the, the national bird of Guatemala. Out of her head is coming a tree, two trees actually, and what's this? A spider. And this? You recognize butterflies? To the Aztecs, a butterfly was the soul of a dead warrior. And spiders spin. So we've got, again, a male-female tree. The pink tree is the female tree with the spinners, and the yellow tree is the, the warrior tree with the souls of warriors. This is another um, mother-father tree growing out of this. What's that? Butterflies are the souls of two kinds of people. Warriors who die in battle and women who die in childbirth. Now, the usual say, thing that the Aztec will tell you when you say, what's a butterfly mean? Is that's the soul of a warrior. And they usually mean a man. And I don't doubt that some men also spun, but these are spinning devices. And so there's the spinning wheels and the spiders. This is clearly set representing women. I can understand that, but how do you know for sure the one in the middle is the female and the ones on the end are, are male? Oh, that's an excellent question. They, they look so similar in the carving. That's a very good question. Um, wherever this, this is called the great goddess, and there's some argument as to whether it's female or not. But usually, when she's shown without all this stuff, all the star stuff across her body, she wears a catch comedal, a triangular garment like this, which is a female garment. These guys are not wearing catch comedals, they're wearing male garments. Because, you know, they had traditional clothes. And aside from that, you're really right, we're not certain. And the fact that this so-called great goddess has a tree growing out of her that's both male and female, maybe she's a god goddess. You know, maybe she's a dual god. The, the, the original gods of the Olmecs, were, uh, not the Olmecs, of the Aztecs was called Ometeotl, which was a male-female creature. It was something that was both masculine and feminine. The point is that these, these, these trees appear in all these different cultures. This is the tree from the, uh, the one we just looked at, a drawing of it. And this is a tree from a much earlier, this is from about 500 AD. And this is about, yes, the family tree. This is another bird eating a snake in a double tree with two different species of fruit. Again, it's a male-female tree. And I've got to let you guys out of here, so I've got to this, get to the end of this section. Come on. Here's another tree ceremony. How many people have seen this? It's called the volador ceremony. They climb up this rope ladder. And notice that this is right in front of a pyramid. There used to be a pyramid here. That's where they built churches in Mesoamerica. They built them on top of the platforms of pyramids to serve because the ground was already sacred to these people. If you didn't want them to come to church, put the church where they go. And so they now perform. And, and what they do is there's four guys. They climb on top of this thing. They, they, have, uh, they have their feet tied to the ropes. The ropes are wrapped around the pole. The thing spins around 13 times. Four guys times 13 means 52, the sacred number. Again, they represent the universe. And there's one guy in the center. And this is a diagram of the creation of the universe by, uh, from a very, uh, not very ancient Maya thing. There's 260 dots around here. The 260 dots represent the 260 days of the Maya calendar. And there's four quarters that are labeled south, north, west, and east. And this is the center, and there's the four quarters. They're each doing a ceremony in each of the four corners. These are all gods. And the 260-day calendar is related to the four directions, to the creation myth. And so they're mixing up time and space. Here's another version of the same myth <coughs> from a Mishtek manuscript. There's a Saba tree. It's got a specific bird in the branches. I guess that's a, I don't know what bird that is. Looks like an eagle. That's a Quetzal in this tree. Um, that's a parrot in this tree, which is a chocolate tree. Uh, this is a spiky cactus or something, and it's, it's got two women. So this is another version of the same thing. Again, the 260 dots around the ed edge represent the 260 days of the sacred calendar. They're relating time, space, species of birds, species of trees, gods, and everything. It's sort of one sort of Einsteinian uh, unified field theory. <laughs> and here's another version of the same thing. Here's a bird in a spiky tree. Here's another drawing of it. Um, it's a red tree. It's growing out of a lady, a lady's skeleton. He's making an offering of tobacco. He's climbing out of the branches, just like that people were that were being born from the tree. And this is the tree of the south. This is the tree of the east. There's the east. This is the tree of the north. Pardon me, west. 
different species of bird, different species of trees. That's a quetzal. That's a corn plant. That's a spiky tree that might be a, might be a um, um, cactus. It's growing suns for fruits. But anyway, these are the directional trees. Here's the one in the center. The center has a quetzal bird the, growing out of this corn plant. You see the giant ears of corn. And it's being fed by people that are fertilizing it with their own blood. See the streams of blood? Maya kings. This is something that I think is, I, I want to leave you with this because I know that I'm going to run out of time before I get to the final couple of slides. But Maya kings believed that the gods wanted rulers' blood. The gods were happy with anybody's blood, just like a starving man would be happy with any old food. But the uh, Aztecs actually said this. They said that if you feed the, the gods the blood of a commoner, it's like an old stale tortilla. <laughs> OK, it's nourishing, but just barely. What they really like is the blood of noblemen. Fresh, warm from the oven tortillas. And so the Aztecs were all the time capturing neighboring nobles. And so were the Maya. And the nobles themselves, when they couldn't go out and capture their neighbors, because they, they were like friends with them. It's my brother over there. They would feed the gods their own blood. And they did that by stabbing themselves. And that's two parts of the body, as they no doubt discovered very early, that you can cut repeatedly and it doesn't make a scar. Cut your arm, it makes scar tissue, right? Not a very nice place to cut. Cut your tongue. It heals. It bleeds like crazy. Anybody bite your tongue really badly? Mm -hmm. It bleeds like crazy, and then it heals without leaving a scar. Right? The other part of your body is your penis. And so men would stab their penises. Women would stab their tongues. Men would stab their penises. And of course, feet, when a man bleeds from his penis, he's also imitating a woman's menstrual flow, somehow momentarily capturing the magic that only women have. But if if our president had to stand on the steps of the Capitol and stab himself every time he decided to make a major decision like going to war, I don't think we'd be in Afghanistan. No. <laughs> these, these royal people believed the gods wanted royal blood. And they found a way to feed the gods repeatedly. And there's many images of guys doing just this. This is a, this is a bloodletting tool, the stream of blood coming from right down between his legs. And I'll finish up with this. This skeleton on the bottom is in this position. Okay? It's a very odd position, don't you think? Mm 